Okay. Hi. Um, sorry. Uh, sorry to keep this quick on schedule, but uh, we have three more talks, and I think they're all fun ones, and I want to fit, fit them all in today. Uh, before I go on, uh, some announcements. All of you have got feed. Uh, wait, wait. First important announcement. Did somebody lose a key down in the dining area? If you did, I've got a key. It says link on it. If you've lost one, if you find you've lost one, find me later. Um, all of you have got feedback forms. Uh, do let us know how we've done so far. Oh, well, how HasGeek has done. Just as an FYI, I <laughs> am not part of HasGeek, and so I cannot give you free beer. <laughs> so, uh, but do fill in the feedback forms and drop them at the registration counter after you're done today. Also, when you're leaving, if you could just leave your uh, NFC badges as well. That would be really helpful. Okay, our next talk is by Arpan who runs a Hyderabad-based design and development firm called Horde Software. And he's going to be talking about uh, responsive design, which uh, is design, I'm sure most of you know what responsive design is. It adapts to context. So he will show us tools and techniques to do so. Hi, guys. I am Arpan. Rahul already introduced me, so I'm not going to talk more about myself. I've really been enjoying this conference so far, a lot of fantastic talks, so I've got really big act to, many big acts to follow. Hopefully you find this informative. Anyway, so I'm talking today about responsive design. So responsive design is about designing your size to respond and adapt to different screen sizes, to different resolutions and different input types. Actually, I talked about a similar topic last year, and when I talked about that, this was the image that I used. So these are all the devices that we are designing for. But the reality is a little bit more complex than that. We have a few more devices than that. Now, this is a few of the devices that were on sale in 2011 in the US. And today, we have many, many more devices than that. And these are just the Android devices. You also have iOS, you also have BlackBerry, you also have Windows Phone. So, we have a lot of devices that we need to support and that our users are using. Let's think about just some of the popular devices. Let's say, just take four of these. The iPhone 4, 5, the Galaxy S3, and the Galaxy Note. Now, just look at that. This phone, the Galaxy Note, is over twice the size of that one. So, what do you do when you are designing a site? You can't, do you give both the devices the exact same experience, the exact same layout? Because that's not optimal. And these are just the phones, right? When you add the tablets, you have a few more, and these are just some of the popular ones. You have several hundred more devices that we are supporting. And, well, somebody at Lenovo thought, hey, I need a bigger tablet. So, they came up with a 27 inch tablet. This is not a joke, this is an actual device that's on the market. I thought about getting it, but I don't think it will fit in my pocket, so I decided to pass. Right, so these guys at OpenSignal, they, they ran some stats on some of the devices that their application is running on. And look at that, you have screen sizes from 3 and up. And what do you notice? It's not just that there are so many different resolutions. It's not, yeah, it's not like you have like 4 or 5 or 10 resolutions that I can test on and okay, my site works great. You have every possible resolution. That's one. Second, there is no clear gap between what is a mobile phone and what is a tablet. They are just, you have six inch phones now, and you have tablets that are relatively small as well. So there is no clear gap. So you can't say that I'm going to give one layout to a mobile phone and one layout for the tablet. You need to think about what the screen size is rather than worrying about what device they are using. Okay, so this was a quote that was recently on Twitter. So how do we make sure that our responsive designs are not like that? That we, you have, you used to have layouts that were for mobile, and then you have layouts that are for desktop, and responsive design is just a compromise. How do you make sure that our designs are not a compromise? That they are not just accessible on all these different devices, but that they can be used easily, that a person who is using them will actually enjoy using your site on any device. It doesn't matter what device they access it from. So basically thinking about all of this, looking at all the devices that we just saw and all the different screen resolution sizes, retina displays, input devices. And let's not forget, when we are thinking about responsive design, when we are saying we are going to support every device, we also should not forget those assistive devices. You have already heard a lot about accessibility today, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. 
But let's not forget, when we are talking about responsive design, we are saying we are targeting each and every device that's there. It doesn't matter who the user is, it doesn't matter what device they use, they should be able to access our site. So where do you begin? Well, so here's some bad news. I don't have some super secret formula to give you today. There's no one formula that's going to work for everyone. Each of us, each one, each designer thinks differently, inspiration strikes us differently at different times. The fact is even when I'm working on different projects, my process changes from one project to the next. It depends upon the requirements of the project, it depends upon the client and how he understands things. But yeah, there is no one process that's going to work for everyone, but there are a few strategies, a few techniques that you can use to improve your workflow, to improve your responsive designs. So let's see, what can we do? The first thing to remember is that responsive design can't be bolted on. You can't first design a site that is for desktop screens and that is all static and fixed, fixed width and then add this as an additional feature. Responsive design, if you want to create a good responsive design, it has to be built from the ground up. It's not like, okay, I'm going to add shadows and effects and some special feature to this. Responsive design has to be thought about from the beginning, from the design phase itself. Don't keep it for the last, it's not at the very end. Second, think about in your design, in your design elements, try to aim for resolution independence as much as possible. What does it mean? That means that use CSS3 features like drop shadows, rounded corners, gradients, whenever possible rather than using images so that as you are changing the layout for different devices, you don't have to keep track of 20 or 100 different images for every size. CSS3 is actually very, very powerful if you take a look at it and see how well it can work. It can, you can create some very sophisticated layouts and designs with just these features. Next, yeah, sorry, yeah. In addition to this, now you cannot do everything with CSS3. You need, you still need to have icons. You still need to have images. So what about icons? You can create sprites, image sprites for multiple different sizes, multiple different resolutions. But it is better, a better option is to use icon fonts, which icons are already vector, they are already scalable. You can change the color, you can change the size and they're very easy to manage. And there are a number of different tools that are there which will help you with this. There are pictos, shift icons and symbol set and there are many different sites. I will share some of the links at the very end. Yes. A couple of problems that come up when you use icon fonts is yeah. one, the monochrome. Yes. You cannot have multicolor. You can't, for instance, have two shades of gray in your icon. Yeah. Okay. And two shades of gray is a very common pattern. Correct. Uh, SVG works a little better for that except SVG doesn't work in older browsers again. Yeah. Uh, so that's one point. And um, the second thing is hinting in icon fonts is usually problematic. You know, on a regular desktop, when you're trying to display an icon font at 13 pixel or 14 pixel, which is the size of your text, it usually turns out to be a resolution that the icon font designer is not optimized for. Yes. You know, and which means that the vast majority of users using it on the desktop get the worst experience. Sure. Yeah. So this has been my experience as well. Unless uh, icon font is designed really well or unless it's used at larger sizes, it's not going to be optimal at screens that are at low resolutions, especially on desktops and laptops. But hopefully that will improve in the future. But this is just an option that we have right now. The other option is to use image sprites at multiple resolutions. Both SAS and LESS can help you in creating those image sprites without having to every time create a bunch of different images in Photoshop. That's one. Then the, the other option is, uh, there was an article on a list apart talking about RES. So that's actually quite a big topic which I'm so I would encourage you to go and take a look at that, take a look at the site, because if I talked about it now, I wouldn't have time to talk about anything else. So please take a look at that site. I'll also be sharing some of the links related to dealing with images at different screen sizes and at different resolutions. So now let's get to the actual process. Now as designers, all these years we're used to creating designs in our graphics apps, maybe Photoshop, Illustrator, Fireworks, and we create many different Versions. So you create one, two, three versions, you go and share with the client, you get feedback from your colleagues and you make more changes. And we are used to working in different several iterations to create a design that we are finally happy with, right? Now, we continue doing that, but add the browser to each of those iterations as well. So you create a design that you think works, that you think looks good. Then you need to create a quick prototype. Maybe it doesn't need to be perfect, but check, take a look at what your design that you have implemented, how is it going to look in the browser, all right? So at every stage, so you might find that a design that you think works great, that looks beautiful, when you actually look at it in the browser, when you test it on your mobile phone, it might give a very bad experience. So you might need to go back 
and make changes. Maybe the changes might just be some minor changes in the markup and the CSS or you might need to go back to the graphics app. And now it depends upon your uh, where you are comfortable making the changes. But you need to remember this. Make sure that the browser, the actual testing in the browser and testing in the devices is a part of that iteration. But now you can't keep doing like when you go to clients you often have to go with three four different design concepts or layouts. Now you can't do that responsibly and spend create three four different designs get some changes again do three four different designs again get changes and test in all the different devices. So one of the options that has been put forward is this thing called style tiles. So what are style tiles? So basically design tiles are basically a design deliverable. So basically you have a bunch of you have a set of fonts colors and certain layout elements. So rather than going with a finished layout and saying this is what it is going to look like on the desktop. You look you are trying to create look at what the brand identity of the site is going to be on the web and you create a few of these and check how they are going to look. So based on this so you start with a you start with a certain base with a certain foundation of typography of colors and of certain design elements and then you go start designing responsive. Now when you are once you have done that you have to go and start actually designing the site. So the first thing which has been if you are designing if you are designing for responsive design the first thing that has always been taught is mobile first right and we are very very we are all, all very disciplined and we always follow the rules. Well anyway so here is the thing that you need to do. You start with the mobile layout first yes. But as you are defining breakpoints so you have media queries with, which say that at this size I the layout has to change. Do not define these media queries, do not define these breakpoints based on the devices that you have. Do not say that this is the iPhone, so this is a breakpoint, or these are all mobile phones, so I am putting a breakpoint at this point. Rather, define breakpoints based on your design requirements. What does that mean? Let us say you, you have started with the mobile layout, you have everything is in a single column at the beginning. Now we are looking here as the screen grows, bigger, larger screen on a different device. This layout that you have designed for the small mobile might not be optimal for a different device for a larger screen. So at that point you define a media query, you define a breakpoint and you add a layout. You decide maybe you might add a column, you might shift certain things around and you keep doing that. So you keep grow, as the screen size keeps growing you define breakpoints. But define the breakpoints based on what your design requires. And I am going to actually show, demo how you could do some of that. But let us take a look at the next thing. Okay. When we are designing responsive sites, let us not think of our site as a bunch of separate columns. So you have on the desktop layout you have four columns or three columns, the screen narrows, the column drops to the bottom, again the screen becomes narrower and the column drops to the bottom. But rather think about how your content in the site on the page is related to each other. What does it mean? What is what do I mean by network of content? Let us take a look at this site. So you have an article. Right, you have the article title and the content, you have some information about the author and you have some pull quotes and images. Now in the old method what you would do if you just drop the column is this pull quote which might be related to one of these paragraphs at the top drops all the way to the very bottom which does not make any sense. Instead think about how this and this way what is the connection and where they are connected. So in this case what I have done as the screen becomes narrower rather than this going to the very bottom it merges into the column into one of the places in this based on where it is relevant. So think about your code your design you should be starting it at the HTML level itself make sure that the markup is in the right order. So that when you merge the things in when you decrease or increase columns you have the content coming into the right locations. And again when you go to the smallest layout to the mobile there are slight changes but essentially you have kept the order of the content based on their requirements. So this is the thing prioritize the order of the code. The design in the browser should start yes. Yes I it is mobile first I just wanted to demonstrate how the art, uh, article how page you was. Know, if you are doing it mobile first how would you know the source order on a desktop site would look. Okay, so that is the point. So when you are designing rather than looking at what it is going to look like in the desktop browser, you should be looking at the order of the priority of the content on your site. What where does the title come in, where does the content come in, where should the navigation and the sidebar be. Then 
as as the screen size goes you use css features to lay out the content to move the content around sometimes it can get a little bit complicated and it's not always easy to do this but if you follow this technique if you follow this method it can make a big difference what do i mean just take a look at this now in this on this side so this is related to your question on this side you have the uh, tagline which is probably like the uh, close to the logo you keep it should be at the top of the page while you have the sidebar things like the twitter feed and subscription which are not as important as the content right so although they might be together on the desktop page what you should be doing in your source code is to make sure that that is at the top this comes next and that one comes to the last so design your markup accordingly then you can use your css to move things around that's not too difficult right so this is so if you start with the mobile first and you have prioritized the content in terms of what comes first so that in the in the source order that is first the tagline the content comes next and the footer elements the sidebar things that are not as important are still there on the side but they are at the bottom as your screen size in, in grows you don't just as i said don't just think about it in terms of columns that i have to have two columns or three columns and these columns everything in this column stays together all of these two column these two are in a single column in the source order they have been put in completely two different places so that when you are on the mobile phone you have the content where it needs to be and if you do this it it's not just helpful for mobile devices it is also helpful for assistive devices because a user doesn't a user should not have to go through and read all the sidebar before they get to the meat of the content any questions regarding this anything else how do you do this kind of layout so if you look at your desktop layout yes now are you doing absolute positioning because then in which case you're also assuming browser width yeah um, or do you have some other way of making sure things fall in place so basically today i haven't really planned a lot about the code itself but it depends in this particular case you could use you could figure out how we are going to be using padding how we are going to be using this at other times in a particular layout if it does, if you are not able to do it using css uh, or you need to resort to something like absolute positioning the other option is have the content in two different locations in your markup that's a, that's a last resort that's not the best option but that repeats your content and makes increases bandwidth usage for mobile yeah so that's the thing you need to figure out it depends on the layout like in the previous layout the in this page the way has, the way they have done it is rather than putting things in just separate columns they have separated each column into a set of uh, several columns several content each element has so the, you have first in this main article you have this article then that sidebar is in the markup and then you have the other things yeah this, so this is the, this, this is, is pretty straightforward no this is the actually the one that i can't make sense of how you are how it's done so you look at the pull quote yeah. it comes after the first paragraph not after the first paragraph it comes after the fourth of the first paragraph yeah so now how the heck did it jump up over there how was it positioned you are using floats to say float right so then so float right doesn't take it up it takes it to the right so it has to be absolutely positioned to go up you can send it how up do you send it up in float if 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 this is floated to the left and yeah. this is floated to the left and that's floated to the right now it that's, will go to the uh, top so the interesting part here is that quote is in the middle of this column yes okay so how did this next one come back in the middle it can't have been floated that's why it's actually trying to go to the parent of the column and then going to the right side of that that's my best guess from looking at this or it could be absolute positioning i i don't see how to do how this can be done without absolute positioning okay challenge accepted actually i have done <laughs> <laughs> yeah so actually i have done stuff similar to this in different not exactly like this but stuff similar so it is actually not as like not as complicated when you actually get right to the core to the css it can be done without too much difficulty so let's work on that after this i'd really like to see the code that makes this possible sure <laughs> so i haven't designed this particular site so but we can take a look and we can also try our own stuff <laughs> so anyway the idea behind this is that the fact is don't think about your content just as a bunch of columns but think about how the different elements are connected to each other and design accordingly like as i said some of these things they seem quite complicated and it's not they are not easy you need to have a really really good grasp of css to be able to do this and you need to not only that even if you have a good grasp you need to challenge yourself you need to push yourself and if you do that you can achieve this occasionally you might need to do javascript but i would prefer i would say that many of these layouts can be done just with html and css so
so i'm sure yes a question over there I actually you are talking about creating websites uh, responsive right from the scratch. Yes. So we are, that's what we are talking about here. Yeah. So I have a scenario where we already have developed one application. So do you have or do you suggest any strategy which we can follow to make it responsive? So uh, keeping in mind the uh, way you just told, uh, just to make sure um, uh, keep the order in mind, order of the content yeah. in mind, so and then do that. So here's the thing: responsive design, preferably you start from from the base but it's not always possible yeah. you might already have a page that you might already have a site that is there and you want to add a mobile layout or a responsive layout to that so the idea is to add add media query specifically for mobile and do that you want to hear more about that watch the video that i spoke last year or at meta refresh okay that covers a little bit more about this and you can talk to me after sure this. thank you okay so back to this don't dumb things down for mobile i already heard this today so I'm, but i'm going to tell you say it again Today, the mobile devices that we have today, many of them, many of the browsers that we have on our mobile devices are far, far more powerful than the devices that we had earlier. So don't just assume that a user who is on the mobile does not want to, does not want all the content. So let's, here's a simple set of pages, set of designs, a responsive design that is done for different layouts. Now here, if you notice how you have the same content, you have the title, you have the metadata, like the author and the uh, date, and you have the content. And at the largest size, they have made some changes so that to improve the layout further at a larger screen. But here's the thing, you might say, but what about the sidebar? In this layout, you have the sidebar, you have the bunch of all the links related to other articles, while on the mobile layout that's missing. But it's not, it's there in the title, in, at the top they have a button which still displays that. But what they have done in the mobile layout is, they have taken a look at what is most important. And on the mobile, you come to an article, you want to read the article. You don't want to see all the sidebar and everything else at the beginning, right? So that is hidden. But if you want to access that, if you want to go to a different site, you want to look at articles that are related to this, it is still there. So the point is not to say that because it's a smaller screen, I'm going to, I'm not going to add these features or I'm going to remove these features. Instead, take it as a challenge, figure out what is the best way for me to lay it out, what is the best way for me to utilize this limited screen space. And don't you, don't do this. If you want to hide certain elements, if certain elements should not be displayed on the mobile screen, mobile layout or on a specific layout, don't just say display none because if you, if it is hidden, it is hidden completely for all devices, especially if someone is accessing from an assistive device. They might not know that it has to be clicked or different. Instead, use negative margins, use, there are many techniques. The easiest way is just give a negative margin to the element so it's moved off the screen, it is not visible on the screen, but an assistive device can still access it. And again, Mobiles are not less capable devices. The fact is many times mobiles have certain features that desktops don't have. For example, take a look at this layout. For the mobile layout, they have added two buttons at the top. You know what that does? If you click on call us, it opens the phone, it opens the phone app in your phone with their number filled in. You click on find us, your maps opens with their address selected. So there's just a thing, this is something that you probably could not do on the desktop, but they have done it for the mobile because the mobile has certain features that the desktop does not. And okay, so performance, good performance is good design. Remember this always. So yes, actually I don't really have time to tell you the full story, but there's a story, th this is what happened at YouTube. So the video page was 1.2 MB in size. And this guy was, somebody was ranting about it, so this guy decided to fix it. So Chris Zacharias, so he changed it, he edited it, made many optimizations to change the file size from 1.2 MB down to 98 KB. And they tested it, they added an opt-in feature and they launched it. So if somebody like wanted this layout, they could use it. But you know what happened that after a week they looked at the data, what, what would I, what would you expect? The site would load faster, right? But the, the data showed that the site was taking longer to load. Does anyone know why? Exactly. So, People who were previously not able to access the site were, a, were suddenly able to start accessing the site. They looked at load times from countries like Africa, South America, and Southeast Asia, and they were sometimes as long as two minutes. So people were willing to wait two whole minutes for the page to load before the video is even displayed. Now, if it was taking two minutes on this new layout, that means it was taking 20 minutes on the old layout, not for the video, just for the page. So suddenly users who were never able to access their site 
were suddenly able to access a site. And that's something that we don't think about because we generally have broadband, we have 3G, which is not always there, but we are used to having good performance. So we need to think about users who don't. And finally, testing. You need to be testing your designs continuously through the iterations as you are doing it on actual devices. You cannot just make your browser screen smaller and say, hey, I have tested it on a small screen. You need to actually look, take out a mobile, take out a smartphone, open the site and take a look at what it's going to look like. Now, you might not be able to afford like, like some companies have 50 different devices, you might not be able to afford that. Have maybe three or four devices are few different screen sizes. Now, smartphones in India are actually quite cheap and you can get a second hand device maybe. The point is have a few devices and test on the actual device. And I have been told that in Bangalore there is an open device lab which allows you to go in which has many devices, I get 50, 100 devices to test them on. So, utilize that. If you are in Bangalore then you have that option. If you are not then you still need to have a few devices. And finally, publish. Do, when you are creating your design, especially when it is responsive design, do not wait until it is perfect. It is going to take a lot of time. Do not wait for perfection. Once you are satisfied, once it is once it's good enough, launch it. You get feedback from your users, see how they are using it. You might have some brilliant idea that you think is so brilliant, but your users might hate it. And alternately, you might think that there is this problem, this really big problem that I need to fix and nobody else might care about it. So, get it out to your users. Because remember, once you have published your site, once it is online, that is not the start, that is not the end of your design process. You need to get feedback from your users, you need to iterate, you need to experiment, you need to try new things and see what works and what does not. And finally, if you are trying something new, some, a new technique, a new design that somebody else has not thought about, then publish it on your own site or share it on Twitter, share it with us so that we could also try that out and maybe some of us might be able to give you some more insight on that. And I, there are a few tools, different tools that are there. One is just testing out, you, Firefox has a plugin. This is a bookmarklet that can be used to test it in different layouts. You have this app called Remote Preview, which is something similar to, I guess, Open Device Lab has things like this. So, you basically load the page and it loads in all the different devices that you have. Then there is this app, Image Optim, which is for optimizing your images. If you are on the Mac, you can use this. If you are not, you ha there is smush.it, which smush it, which does the same from the web. <coughs> And finally, there are a lot of different sites. So, I have covered very, very little in this topic. There is still so much more. You could probably sit for a day and several days and still not know enough about this topic. So, please go to these sites. I will be sharing more links online on Twitter as well as I was planning to create a checklist, but I was not, <coughs> it is not ready yet. But I am, here is the plan. There is a lot of things about responsive design that many ideas that all of us have. And I am sure there are many of you here who know a lot more about responsive design than me. So, the plan is I am going to set up a GitHub repo with some of the checklist, some of the items, some of the ideas and I would like all of you to contribute. So, if I will be sharing that link on Twitter later today and that is it. Any other questions? Uh, uh, okay, so, responsive design has finally hit the mainstream and there are offices and uh, designers all over the world who are using it. Uh, except that responsive design in the web uh, is not it is in its infancy specifically when it comes to web apps when people want to build working machines. Yes. Uh, the uh, canonical example is that the Gmail team refuses to make a design that works on desktop and phones. They are actually separate code bases. They are yeah. separate experiences. Uh, is there any sort of direction that you think the web is heading towards where we will have responsive behavior on pages? Uh, I completely get on websites, on static websites and content. Uh, it seems to be now it, it's boiling down to a layout problem. But it seems like we don't even have a clear direction in the web app space yet when it comes to applications. Yes, so that is a pretty big, it depends upon the project, it depends upon the thing. Like something like Gmail could easily be made responsive because you do have, you already have a clear way to do it. You already have a mobile app which does that. But it's not just a viewing thing. It's like the actual behavior, the JavaScript, the nature of the JavaScript being executed changes at different resolutions. Yeah. So. That's, it's difficult to say, it depends on the project, it depends upon that because we are currently working on one small project where we are, we are working on it responsibly, but that's not live yet. And there are other projects where uh, we decided that the client decided to have a mobile app and did not want to spend for a completely responsive design, but we made it responsive so that 
it works on tablets and desktops while if you are on the mobile you have a separate mobile layout. So, it depends upon the complexity of the application and it depends upon your budget. For example, although responsive design is really really nice and I find it exciting, it is not like a silver bullet, it is not going to work for everything. So, there might be pages, there might be times when you need to have a, you want to have a rich client, you want to have one rich client for larger devices and one rich client for smaller. I would still go with responsive, I would still say that design responsibly and if you still want to have a separate mobile apps, go forward with that, start with a responsive design. So, that should be the first thing, it should not be do I want to have a responsive design or a mobile app. You start with the mobile, you start with a responsive design, mobile first design it and then in addition to that you want to have certain refinements, you want to have a native app for the iPhone or for the for Android, go ahead and do that. But your a user should not have to download an application just to access your site. Um, yeah, I wanted to um, answer Sunil's question in a different way. Uh, I think the problem that you're getting at is uh, technology uh, limitation, right? That we have with our current um, CSS and JavaScript. So uh, I think it's um, for us um, people who are implementing sites to figure out what the limitations are. Like, for example, before media queries were invented uh, or implemented. Uh, someone realized that uh, if we had this capability then it would be easier to target different viewports. Right now we are realizing it's really hard to customize our behavior, uh, our app behaviors on different viewports. So we've got to figure out what the difficulties are and then propose the solutions and hopefully the browser vendors will start implementing them and uh, we get truly responsive or I don't know if that's even something. Our end goal is to deliver a good uh, optimized experience no matter what your viewport. So, uh, if today that means serving different code bases, then so be it and uh, figure out ways that will help us reduce this um, diversity of code and maybe use the same code base, right? Yeah. So, actually if I could add to that, uh, Ethan Marcotte actually talked about that I think last year where he's talking about not just having a responsive design, but on the server side customize, so you have a responsive design, but in addition to that on the server side you customize the uh, markup that is given to different devices. So you have a combination of device uh, detection and responsive design. So, it depends upon the complexity of the site because like he was like I talked about source order and we said it is not always that easy to just decide what source uh, what something should be uh, to keep something at the top in a desktop layout and at the bottom in a different layout. So, in that case one of the solutions that they had for one of few of their ap applications was to customize the layout markup that is submitted given. You still have a responsive, you start with the responsive layout, but then customize the markup at different resolutions. Uh, I am not sure about, it would depend upon your requirements, but that is one of the things. They did not actually what they were doing was not necessarily JavaScript, but they were actually giving different HTML markups to the different, it was the same markup, just uh, reordered differently. I am um, actually, you know, uh, picking on this, um, instead of sniffing user agent to decide what JavaScript to serve, um, is there any accepted way of linking your media queries with JavaScript? See media queries for instance are the right now the pretty much the only way to detect whether you are on a small screen or a large screen. So, well me media queries detect the media queries of, we are using media queries based on the width of the screen, but JavaScript can also detect the same thing. Exactly. So, so have so you, you seen have you seen standardization in terms of saying that if a screen is a certain size, then load this script or uh, load that script? Uh, I think it was either yeah, it was Marcot in that same talk where he talk, discusses about advertisements. So the one of the issues was you have a responsive layout where everything is flexible, except for an ad which is a fixed width. Yeah. And what do you do with that ad? And also, what about uh, in a in a desktop layout you have the ad at the top in the side column. But that column is at the very bottom and an advertiser is not going to be happy if your ad is at like is never going to be seen. Yeah. So, what they did is they inserted different elements, three elements for ads in each column and based on the screen size, they inserted the ad in that column. So, it was a single script, it was just single markup, but based on the media, based on the screen size, they inserted the ad in a specific place as it was as required. So, that was one option that they gave. So, but uh, have you seen examples of standardization of saying that this is how you load JavaScript based on screen size? You know, media query, for instance, is well established. Anybody who does responsive will do it in the same way. Okay. You, know, so you either look for resolution so or you look for. So, basically saying that one JavaScript file for this layout and another for that. Yeah. Not even resolutions. No, like I can do something like if 
my the browser supports touch i will yes. load all my touch behaviors so now True. the question is if the width is just less than 360 px load this behavior yeah so and that I, can have be you done. seen work yeah, i haven't actually done that uh, so uh, one more input here is that uh, you might want to uh, have a shift in the paradigms uh, where you are also thinking towards you know developing desktop apps in the first place so say for example you can use events like tap which are abstracted uh, as well for pointer events and you know uh, touch events uh, so at the end of the day you are essentially not worried whether this this application is being used on a mobile or on a desktop and uh, uh, secondly uh, 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 just about desktop like if you look at uh, jquery mobile so they have like a uh, paradigm shift in terms of even desktop apps that uh, they try to enforce people to develop so that they gel well with different sizes of uh, you know mobile as well yeah okay so just an addition in it to add to what you just mentioned uh, i am not a big fan of big libraries like bootstrap or jquery mobile they are pretty good tool to start for prototyping but if you want to have a really good app when you want to think about in detail about how the different columns how the content is fixed together i would prefer to write it by write it by hand if you are just having a simple like a admin page where the layout is simple and you don't want to have to spend a lot of time that's fine but a user facing site where you are going to be customizing a lot of the layout and where you want to really think not just okay these are the layouts these are the columns just put one below the other but actually think about how the content different pieces of content are linked to each other it is it, it will be impossible for you to do that with bootstrap you need to write your own css hi uh, this is not uh, just uh, with responsive design i just wanted to check with the community uh, a ie6 user can we consider them as uh, disabled <laughs> <laughs> okay so here's the thing ie6 ie7 they don't support media queries so the thing that was a big discussion at alista part was this the absence of a media query it's a, is itself a media query so if a device doesn't support media queries then by default they get the mobile layout now if you want to add specific css for ie6 7 8 you can do that by using conditional comments but for i might consider doing that for ie8 but for ie6 i'm just as i'll give them the mobile layout they'll still the user will still be able to access it it might not be optimum but they'll get the mobile layout so that's one option that you have you have to decide what how many percentage of your users are on ie6 no the uh, reason why i asked is uh, most of us designers hate ie6 and uh, no, we all no i love ie6 just kidding no <laughs> most of us i said uh considering that and uh, we hate ie6 we don't want uh, to do for ie uh, but we still uh, talk about accessibility and stuff like that so what do we do about users who have ie6 at a majority uh, it can be uh, at a uh, uh uh browser center or uh, people who have very old uh, os can we ignore them so here's the thing if you are writing right markup and you use a media query as a media query itself saying that this is the base layout so what will happen is mobile tablets all of that will get the new, will get the enhanced layout while ie will just get the content which is formatted so you might have the, this is this is a header 2 this is a header 1 so just do it in such a way that either they don't get any style styling at all so you just have a plain page which they can access or create special styling which is there which is outside the media queries which can be accessed only which i6 is going to apply and all the other layout will be given to the browsers which can handle them okay the reason why i asked is uh, i got a, a leaflet from uh, registration counter uh, from clear tip they said uh, we I, we do that we do this and uh, we also hate i So just wanted to check. Uh, so I6 users are not uh, so, disabled. So here's the thing. Yeah. So I6 users are not disabled. A person who is blind doesn't have a choice. A person who has I6, I'm pretty sure he could change at least to I7. I do support I7 on some of the sites. Uh, again, it depends on your client. It depends upon your requirements. 
uh, just to add to it, I think for I uh, for IE six, you don't uh, you don't consider them to be you know inaccessible. There's this concept of progressive enhancement. So you give the least common denominator functionality to IE six, and then you decorate on top of it. So Chrome guy gets a much better experience. But that does not mean IE six does not get anything. So the simplest way to do that is just to use a media query. So anything that's in not the media query. Not just for layouts, it's for everything, right? No, yeah. So anything that's outside the media query, like typography exactly. and forms, will be you, exactly. IE will get that. While anything that's in the media query will be hidden to IE. So you are using yeah, the absence of media query as a media query itself. Yeah. Um, one more thing is, you know, uh, that's a great point that people missed. You know, progressive enhancement. But one more thing is. Um, I'm not sure uh, the people using IE6 whether they have a choice or not because I know many IT companies in which uh, the IT departments uh, say that you only have IE6 and you don't have any admin privileges and you cannot install your own browser and there people are stuck with IE6 over there. So yes, that is changing. That is changing, but still, still, you know, the, the situation still persists. So uh, if your if your web application deals a lot with uh, those kinds of people, if your clients are those, then definitely you have to keep those people in mind and use progressive progressive enhancement and all that kind of stuff. Hello, hello. Uh, one small question, like uh, responsive. Hello. Ah, hello. Yeah, so uh, just to clarify about the we don't support IE6. In fact, we uh, we've stopped supporting IE6. Any new development that we're doing, we're not really looking at IE6. We're probably going to do what Arpan has suggested that we'll probably load our mobile site so it's accessible. But I think uh, we've spent too many hours and uh, blood and sweat trying to support IE6. So we're going to stop doing that. Okay. So just one thing to add to that, right? So. We have limited time and we are talking about accessibility. So we need to figure out how much time we have to spend on that. So are we going to spend a lot of time supporting IE6 or are we instead going to spend time working on improving accessibility for other users? Just something to think about. Thanks all of you. Thank you.